Hi Moglets, today we're taking a look at the version 2.4 special program, giving some quick thoughts on it. In a nutshell, we got new characters, a big new area with new enemies, a lot of events, of course with the new 5 star comes a new 5 star weapon, some quality of life things as well, and just a few other small things we are going to be getting into. First, of course, we have Shin He. Personally, I think she has one of the best designs out of all characters. I just really, really, really like it. She is a cryo pole arm user. Uh, it feels like we've been getting a lot of pole arm users recently, but uh, it's fine, I guess. And straight off the bat, she sounds quite interesting, but also a little confusing. She is classed as a support character, finally another 5-star support, it feels like it's been a while. And in a way, she's kind of similar for Cryo, as these last banners have been for Geo. So like with Goro and Ito and Albedo and all that, it's been a big boost to Geo teams, and I think she'll be a big boost to Cryo teams. Starting off already a little complicated, her elemental skill will give a damage bonus based off of her attack to all allies when they deal Cryo damage damage with anything, burst skills, basic attacks, whatever. But then one of her passives gives a damage boost, and depending on how she casts her elemental skill, or her E, this damage boost will only apply to either basic attacks, plunging attacks, whatever, or skills and bursts. So if you tap her E, skill and burst damage will be increased, and if you hold it, normal attacks, plunging attacks, charge attacks will be increased. So that alone sounds nice for any cryo damage dealer, Ganyu, Ayaka, and when it comes to her burst, I think even Eula would be a viable partner for her. Her burst will summon a talisman spirit, which deals continuous cryo damage, but it'll also reduce cryo and physical resistance, which is why I think, you know, Eula could definitely benefit here. And then finally, when you get her second passive, it'll also increase the cryo damage bonus of your allies that are in this area. Next up, we have a four star, another pull arm, uh, this time Geo, however, uh, interesting as we've been having a lot of Geos lately, but let's see what she can do. Yunjin sounds pretty interesting straight off the bat. Starting with her skill already, she sounds a little bit like uh, Beidou. So there's like this perfect counter going on. If you can use her elemental skill as soon as she's getting attacked, it will automatically go to the next stage, level two, and uh, slice them. But yeah, essentially you can hold her elemental skill and it will charge an attack. She will also provide herself a shield. Based on how long you hold the skill, it'll either be level one or two. And again, if you can time it right, uh, you can have level two very quickly if you're like countering an enemy attack at the right time. Yeah. So then her burst is an AOE Geo attack, but also provides a normal attack boost uh, to your teammates based on her defense. So similar to Goro, but she can obviously be used outside of Geo teams. And even more so because her second passive will further increase this normal attack boost you get from using her burst if you have four different elements. So personally, I'm not quite as hyped for Yunjin as I am for Shinha. I'm sorry. These names will take some getting used to. She still definitely sounds interesting. I'd say most of the time I am running four different elements, although, you know, if you want that extra bonus, it means no Zhongli, and I'm very used to having Zhongli in my team by now, so that'd be a little bit of an issue. Apparently she can provide a shield. Uh, they didn't clarify if it was for the whole team, like if you swap out. I. I think it might only be for her though. And she is another character that scales off of death. I've kind of had my fill of that the past couple weeks. So, you know. Shin though, I'm really looking forward to. I haven't used cryo characters a lot uh, because I felt like there weren't that many great supports. I mean, obviously you can do melts and everything, but it'll be fun to try out different combinations with her. But anyway, now we are moving on to the coming banners. So they are bringing back the double banners, which I think is a really nice idea. We will also be having Shin and Yunjin together in one banner. I, I think sometimes they separate them, although I could be misremembering, uh, separate the new four star from the new five star. Uh, but in this case, they're both together. There's also a little text down here that says, Yunjin will also appear in the event wish, blah, 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 in which she will receive a huge drop rate boost. I don't know if this is going to be bigger than usual. <laughs> I hope so, because... Um, I always have a very hard time getting the four stars, at least to C6. I don't know how many Shanlings I got, which I don't need, while trying to get Goro. Oh, she will actually be in both banners. So if you're going for Shin or Xiao, you're probably going to get some uh, Yunjins as well. And then in phase two, we have Zhongli and Ganyu coming back. Zhongli, I think this is his third rerun now. Uh, Ganyu, I'm not too sure. Maybe third as well. Um, regardless, these are two units that I think a lot of people want. So you're going to have to uh, choose. I'm personally probably going to try and get my Zhongli to C2 uh, because Bones and I are doing a lot of co-op and it's kind of annoying that 
one of us doesn't get a shield, so I'll probably try and get Zhongli to C2. I think Ganyu for me is fine at C0, although a little tempting considering we have a very nice cryo support coming for her soon. As usual with new versions, we'll also have new hangouts for Ningguang, and it seems Yunjin as well. New 5-star polearm, obviously this is going to be uh, Shin's signature weapon. If I were to guess, I'd say this weapon has a main stat of attack percent as she does scale off of attack. I'm also gonna assume it goes way more into base attack, like 700 plus, because that's more important for getting her overall attack higher. As far as its passive, you know, a lot of the new weapons have some kind of stack system going on, probably some kind of attack stack increase. And since she gives a lot of those bonuses with her skill, that's probably how it'll proc. Something along those lines, but that's just a hunch, of course. We also have a giant Lego Paimon with wishes engraved. Uh, that's that's pretty cute. We'll also, of course, have new events. Uh, Lantern Rite seems to be coming back. Has it been a year already? I don't know. It feels like it hasn't been that long yet. We can make fireworks ourselves. Some kind of puzzle where you rotate an object. Some collection event where you go in a boat and collect things and or find them on shore. We can also attack them with fireworks, it looks like. Oh no, not the transport balloons. But yeah, you can also uh, collect these things by destroying the uh, transport balloons, it looks like. And then we have a new boss here. Looks absolutely massive. It seems like this is a uh, event-specific boss, so I don't think it'll stick around after that's done, but yeah. Oh, that's cool. Prosperous Partnerships is back, and the new character, Yunjin, is there as well. That'll probably be the one I grab, because everyone else here is C6, I believe. All the Leo F4 stars, it looks like. Ningguang would have been a nice choice as well, but she is C6 recently. But yeah, that's very nice. New outfits for Ningguang and Kaching. Ningguang's is free. Kaching's, however, is not. I don't give a damn. Kaching is getting this outfit as soon as it's physically possible. <laughs> it looks really, really nice. I think they did make a separate sort of video presentation, uh, so we're definitely going to check that out if they don't show it here. There's also a login event here. May Fortune find you. It looks like 10 intertwined fates. Very pog, free free tin pull. Outside the lantern right events, we also have a study in potions. So you can choose which stage you want to do first, but then the others you don't do will get progressively harder. So you should actually start with what you think would be the hardest in terms of enemy or enemy level, and then I guess go to the easy one at the end, which will be harder, but not as hard as if you were to start with the easiest one, you know what I'm saying? And here are the potions. They give various buffs to your team members. It seems like they can only be used once, so you're going to have to pay attention. Use the not as good ones on the easier floors, etc, etc. They will also be providing trial characters in case you are like a newer player and don't have access to a lot of strong characters. Also a new event, eight locals over mountains and seas. Apparently you'll be taking these little dudes to uh, Mondstadt and Leoed and take pictures with them and stuff and you get rewards. Wind Trace is also coming back. I personally didn't like it all that much, but by the end of it, it kind of grew on me. Yes, we will also be getting a new area. It's called Inkonomiya, and it's uh, pretty interesting. So it's located under Watatsumi Island. Um, it's very dark. There's no natural light in this area. Instead, just a really strong light bulb of sorts. And there's a unique mechanic in this area where you can turn it on or off to have essentially daytime or nighttime. And that mechanic will be important for various puzzles laid around this new area. We also have some new enemies here. They seem quite uh, interesting, but also annoying. So when they attack you, they're going to take your energy. So the energy you need to do your burst and um, deal extra damage. The less energy you have, the more damage it'll deal. So um, yeah, that <laughs> doesn't sound good. There'll also be boss versions of these new enemies. Oh no. Not only will there just be random abyss lectors and heralds out in the wild, but we have a new one as well, a pyro herald. But yeah, always love exploring new areas, super excited for that place. I forgot what it's called already because it's kind of long. And finally, we have system optimizations, hopefully some quality of life in here. So in the abyss, they're graying out the uh, remaining challenge time longer than two ten seconds down there when you actually pass that and no longer can get that third star. I guess kind of helpful for newer players, not something that I personally needed, but yeah. This is really helpful though and something I, I'm always forgetting to check the enemies in the chambers while you're on the character select screen. That's very nice. Ooh, that's really cool as well. You can customize the little wheel that pops up here. 
that's really nice. Cause I'm often playing with a controller and yeah, it's just really cool to customize stuff like that. Oh, that's really nice too. So for the map, they have added buttons where you can choose Monstrat Leoe or Inazuma instead of having to scroll all the way over there. Again, this is more for controller users because with PC, you can just drag it really quick, but controller users, it's, it's pretty slow to pan so far out. So that's very helpful. They've changed the UI for crafting as well. Very good idea. I like this way more than the list version. So thank you, very nice change. You can move and store things in the Serenity Pot as sets now. So if you like, you can kind of make a set yourself and then move it or store it or unload it all at once. So that's very useful. Oh, that's cool. Some little musical things as well. You can listen to uh, unlocked soundtracks and even change the background music of your Serenity Pot. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously really looking forward to the new heroes. Um, definitely going to be pulling for them. Again, the new area looks really interesting as well. Uh, there is one final thing I want to do before you wrap this up. The outfit teaser for Arkaching and Ningguang here. Uh, obviously a little biased, but I'm more excited about Kaching's. Uh, but here we go, Teyvat style. Starting off with Ningguang here, it looks like. I mean, hers is really, really nice as well. Happy that's free. And then Kaching. Oh man, I think those uh, reputation tin wings would suit her a lot better in that outfit as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's a really nice outfit. Damn, definitely gotta get it. But I shouldn't be so hype about trying to match outfits and wings. Anyway, no, forget that. I think it's gonna look awesome and I'm looking forward to it. I don't, I don't care what people think. But okay, that'll do it for version 2.4 and my thoughts on it. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below, dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, etc. If you enjoyed the content, it's always greatly appreciated. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.